Hi guys. Hey guys. How are you doing? Thank you so much for all your support so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking and sharing our videos. We really appreciate it. I think this is one of the most requested videos. videos yeah. Yes. yeah, we we're happy to be back and thanks for all the, the interaction that we we have had through our through our comment section. Uh, it's been fun. We've really had some interesting feedback and, and thanks thanks for watching and thanks for the interaction. Okay, so today we are covering um, important aspects that you need to consider uh, before making your move. Uh, that's while you're still in South Africa and getting ready to move and then important aspects you need to consider when you arrive. Uh, this is our experience guys. This is not the right way of doing it. This is just the way that we did it and the advice uh, that we can give based off of our experience. So. Uh, we're not saying that you have to do it this way this is just our experience so yeah hope that you will you will find it useful and that uh, it can save you a bit of time save you a bit of frustration yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah that's what we aim to achieve yeah. so the first area that we want to cover is uh, in the first week that we arrived mm -hmm. the first few things that we did to get ourselves set up to take on the new challenge of being here yeah. so we've laid out all of these items in the order that we think uh, would be most useful for you to, to follow uh, because a lot of the documents that you will need from the previous step re are relied on for the next step so we felt that this order was the most relevant so that is why we are giving you these items in this specific order yeah. Great. Um, and then also just to clarify this is once you have already received your visa um, but you are now and you've booked your tickets and now you are wondering what you need to do prior to getting document ready to be able to set up your life here yeah sure. so we arrive in Auckland on the 16th of January and the very next day on the 17th of January we went to get cell phone contracts what you need for the cell phone contract is your passport and your visa um, and we went to a Vodafone, which is now um, one NZ. Um, with the specific package that we picked, you can call internationally at no additional cost. You get unlimited data, unlimited text, and it costs us one hundred and eighteen dollars per month. Mm -hmm. Zane is the main account holder for our cell phone contracts because he is the one that's got the work visa here. Um, so what he did was just added myself um, to the contract which is something that you can do yeah, yeah you can add up to a certain number of numbers yeah. for a proportional additional cost which is less than the, the initial member so yeah I think with the benefits that come with it mm -hmm. calling being able to call back home at no additional cost unlimited text unlimited data and uh, unlimited local calls I think it's really worth it and yeah and we found that the, the connectivity is great. Mm -hmm. I know that one NZ is working on in further improving their connectivity, uh, even in remote areas. So yeah, something to consider. Uh, there's other networks to consider as well, like I think Spark. Yes. Yeah, yes. that also offer similar deals. So do, do your research, shop around. This is who we ended up going with. Yes. And those are the documents that you will need. Yeah. Also consider what's important to you. What was important for us was to be able to call home. Although you can call via WhatsApp, it was just important that we had a backup plan. So if anything had happened to WhatsApp or the connectivity was bad, we had an option to call home um, directly yeah. through making a normal international phone call. Okay. Yeah, and international calls, maybe just to mention, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a slight delay but nothing that prevents you from having a decent conversation. Yeah. So it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And the package that we took, you could call to 25 international countries and South Africa was listed as one of them. Awesome. That's that on that topic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the next one comes uh, relates to getting your bank account. Mm -hmm. So we did this from South Africa. So. So there will be things that you'll be able to do from South Africa as you're preparing to leave 
and this was one of them. So uh, this was getting the bank account set up. We did ours from home and what was required for this is a proof of address which we got through our municipal account and uh, then we needed to confirm my identity because the bank account was to be opened in my name. To be able to confirm my identity, I had to provide a certified or notarized copy of my passport to confirm my identity. Uh, so, uh, oh yes, the bank will give you a list of uh, approved notaries that you can approach to get your documents certified or notarized. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think these are the approved lists, so it's important that you approach a member or an individual from that list mm -hmm. uh, so that they can certify your documents and get that uh, sent to the bank. If you are doing it in New Zealand, so that means if you're getting your bank account set up in New Zealand, there will be no need to confirm your identity because you will be here in person, uh, but you will still need your proof of address. Uh, so this you can obtain in the form of your uh, tenancy agreement uh, for the lease on your, on, your, on your rental. So we suggest that when you set up your tenancy agreement that you list both occupants name mm -hmm. you and your partner so that you both have a form uh, of proof of residence mm -hmm. uh, I guess you can also get proof of residence from your cellular contract mm -hmm. but we found that uh, the tenancy agreement was the preferred form yes yeah. so with regards to uh, the bank account we felt that it was best to get our bank account sorted before we arrived so that we in the last week during our time in South Africa, we sent money through to New Zealand. It takes a while for your South African funds to, to get processed and to, get, to clear, I guess, and to reflect in the New Zealand account. So we just wanted to have access to funds in our New Zealand account. When we arrived, uh, we just felt more comfortable with that. Uh, to open the bank account cost us nothing, uh, but you will have to pay a fee for uh, the notary, whoever it may be. And uh, we went with uh, ASB Bank yep. uh, simply because none of the other banks got back to us when we applied <laughs> <laughs> for a bank account. Yeah, that is a fact. And from speaking to other uh, couples from South Africa, uh, they also struggled with getting responses from other banks. So ASB was prompt and a representative helped us to get our bank account set up. Uh, yeah, I think that covers the bank yeah. account. Okay, then the next one, which is the license conversion. So this this area gave us quite a, a bit of, of back and forth. <laughs> so fortunately for South Africans, uh, when you convert your license, you do not need to do an additional test. Uh, you simply convert your license because, as I've mentioned previously, the rules of the road are very similar. It did cost us uh, an amount of $52 for that conversion. Uh, and what you will need is your South African license. Uh, you will also need to fill in a form, a conversion form, and uh, uh, you will also need proof of address. So at this stage, uh, you should have confirmation of your address in New Zealand uh, because you would have opened a bank account and have your 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 proof of address updated when you arrive for your current location. So in my case, uh, what had happened is my license had expired. So when your license is ex has expired, uh, they need an additional form of uh, evidence to prove your identity. So I then needed to get a statement from the bank uh, with a transaction showing funds that had come in and out of the bank account. If your license has not expired, you're in a much better position because they can use your yes. license to confirm your identity because it's a valid document it is not expired yeah. so that's one of the tips that we have yeah. uh, ensure that your your driver's license your south african driver's license is still valid and will be valid for a time when you for quite a while while you arrive in new zealand depending on when you want to convert your your driver's license and then uh, just understand that if your license has expired you will only be given a grace period of 12 months yeah. uh, for which it can be expired and for which they allow you to still uh, convert your license 
after 12 months uh, you'd have to unfortunately go back to South Africa get it renewed and then come back and convert your license yeah okay so my situation is a little bit different because my surname on my passport is different to my driver's license and this is the reason why so Zane and I got married in September 2019, uh, early uh, January 2020, um, COVID started and then in March we were locked down. So it was about a year and a half, it was quite difficult to gain access to home affairs and even if you did, your documentation would take very, very long. Mm -hmm. But I ended up changing my smart ID and my passport. I got a new passport with my now new surname, my married surname. But I forgot about my... Please. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. But... Um, <laughs> you forgot about your driver's yeah. license. But I forgot about my driver's license. And by the time we were busy with this entire process of um, getting our visas to um, immigrate to New Zealand uh, it was too late because then it was going to take I think we would have already left South Africa um, before I would have received my new driver's license with, <laughs> with my married surname yeah. so I decided okay it's fine I will leave it um, because there is a way actually for you to come here and convert your driver's license with that discrepancy. But the other challenge is that now my visa is, uh, my driver's license is also going to expire in November, which means I've got until November to sort it out. Otherwise I will need to go back home in December, which we are doing, um, but then I'd have to get my uh, driver's license renewed and wait for that and I don't know how long that's going to take and I need to be able to drive. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, what you need to do to rectify the issue in the surname, surnames not matching, is you have to phone AA and send your marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is, is that they are fine receiving a certified soft copy, but when you go to the center to convert your, your driver's license, they want the original marriage certificate. Now, we did not bring any of our documents because, because we thought that it would be quite dangerous to do. Bringing all these documents in their original form on a plane, on a plane not knowing what could happen. It may be getting lost in our suitcases. So it was just really risky. And we thought we'd leave it at home, safe in our safe at my father-in-law's place. Um, which we thought was the best option. Yeah. In hindsight, we realized that we should have probably <laughs> prioritized getting those documents yeah. here. But when you're going through the whole process, you don't often make uh, the right decision because yeah. you become so overwhelmed True. with everything. So yeah. yeah, that's another tip perhaps. Yes. So basically, if you are in a very similar situation and you don't have enough time to get wait for your driver's license, with your now married surname, then just make sure to bring your original marriage certificate with you. Zane and I experienced very different situations. His was, it was day night. His was super easy and mine was actually quite stressful. I still don't have it because I now need to post my original marriage certificate to New Zealand. Okay, so the next point is, is uh, the IRD number. So this is another item that we could get finalized from South Africa. So the bank account and your IRD number, something that you can get done from South Africa, and something that we suggest you get done because uh, when you do arrive, there's so much to do that if something is ticked off your list, it gives you a sense of calmness and uh, yeah. you can dedicate some time to something else because there's little fires everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so with regards to the IRD number, so your IRD number is basically your tax number, uh, which is similar to the tax reference number you get from SARS back home. Similar process, uh, it's just a unique number that's allocated to you so that you can uh, be tracked by the IRD and to pay your taxes. That's something that your employer will request from you uh, to get you, you set up uh, 
for your IRD number, you will need a proof of your bank account, which you should have uh, once your bank account, your local, uh, your New Zealand bank account is open. The representative assisting you will send you confirmation of that. Uh, you will also then need proof of address. At that stage, you can use your South African proof of address, such as your municipal accounts or any other account. Uh, you will also then need your visa, your passport, and a passport photo. Uh, it costs nothing, you just have to follow the application process on the IRD website. So if you follow these processes, you should have no issues with your IRD number. It's very straightforward. Uh, when we arrived in New Zealand, we were able to get uh, Mishka's IRD number sorted very quickly uh, with the similar documents. Uh, so no, no issues there. So that's that on the IRD number. The next one, guys, is uh, car finance. So we financed our vehicle when we moved uh, to New Zealand. We did not buy a car cash. Uh, so we've had a lot of people struggle quite a bit uh, to get finance, and that is understandable because you do not have a credit history in New Zealand, and uh, therefore lenders are hesitant to lend you money. So for us, uh, the process entailed getting an uh, offer of employment. Mm -hmm. So we got this from my employer. Thereafter, we needed two references from two people who live in New Zealand but do not live with us. So in this case, we suggest perhaps approaching one of your or one or two of your colleagues to assist or friends if you have some here. Uh, but that will be two. And then the financier also uh, requested that we arranged full comprehensive insurance uh, which we arranged through tower insurance uh, through our research we found that uh, tower suited us best and offered us quite competitive uh, premiums so we bundled this with our home contents insurance and uh, uh, so on this we just suggest that you, you do your research find an insurer that gives you the best service um, thereafter uh, with regards to who financed the vehicle, we are with Oxford Finance. Mm -hmm. So we also obtained a few quotes and we found that Oxford gave us uh, the best rate, uh, which is 18%. So the vehicle is financed at an interest rate of 18%, which is quite steep. Uh, and we know it is steep, but like I said, we do not have a credit history and uh, it's something that we expected. Mm -hmm. So shop around do your research and see who offers you the best rate. Uh, so, oh, uh, on the issue of, of the finance, we were required uh, to put down a deposit of 25%. I believe that the minimum deposit is, is 20%, but we were required to put down 20% and then finance uh, the remaining balance. The remaining balance is financed over the period of our visa, which is 36 months. So when you're doing your numbers back home, remember that your interest rate might be quite high and your vehicle will be financed over the period of your visa, which for us is 36 months. So uh, I think that is the, the points on, on the vehicle. Uh, in addition to that, they also just uh, required our visa and passport to make the application. Uh, New Zealand has a quite a big second-hand market, so there are vehicles at various price points, your entry-level vehicles to your high-end vehicles, so find a vehicle that suits your purpose best, and uh, the point that we want to make is that you can get vehicle finance, it will just be uh, at quite a high interest rate, yeah. as you build up your credit history, I think you can negotiate for much better rates. Buying cash is always uh, preferred but uh, if that is not the case, you can find it to you. Great. Anything else? No, nothing else. Yeah. I think we've covered all our points. So guys, uh, like we said, these points are laid out in a specific order because we have found that uh, they rely on each other. And if you follow it systematically, you should be able to tick every item off your list uh, without too much struggle. Yeah. And uh, yeah. We hope that uh, it can save you time, mm -hmm. uh, save you money, get your family back up and running and go back to living a normal life because yeah. that is all we want when we get here is just to go back to living uh, our normal lives.
as quickly as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for engaging with us. Please subscribe to our channel. It will really help us a lot. We are almost at 500 subscribers and our target is to get to a thousand by the end of the year. But we are so thankful to you and to everyone who is engaging with us. And all the best of luck also to everyone who is currently in the process of submitting their own applications. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section below. We'll do our absolute best to respond. Um, given the experience that we have had and gone through. Um, but yeah, if there's anything that we missed, please let us know and we will try to answer those questions or make another video to let you know what our experience was. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and engaging with us. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you. <laughs>